Welcome, everyone. We are live on Facebook, Rumble, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Telegram. This is Campaign for America, episode 39. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We have a new call in line, and if you would like to ask Dennis some questions, or myself, or even make a comment on any of the topics that we've discussed there in the show, um, feel free to do so. That call in line is 702-482-8620. The views expressed on this show are expressly the views of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views, beliefs, or opinions of NewsForUs.World, its hosts, broadcasters, or affiliates. Remember, folks, always use your own discernment when viewing. We encourage our viewers to think for themselves. With that being said, um, let me play the intro and then we can let you do some housekeeping, Dennis. In 1980, Ronald Reagan wore a white suit, a red tie, and a white shirt, and addressed the nation. Hi, I am Dennis Andrew Ball, and I am running for President of the United States. I am talking to you right now because the debates that were conducted this week need to have a presidential response. The economic issues that both Barack Obama and Mitt Romney answered, created in the minds of many of us unanswered questions of how do you sustain economic growth in the United States of America. In light of the decisions and the events that have happened since 2008, what do we need to do to reduce the deficit, increase job creation, maintain Social Security, and Medicare and provide the opportunity for our children and future generations not only to survive but to thrive in a global economy. I would like to talk to you quickly on how I perceive what needs to happen. The United States of America at this time is suffering because the means of production have not equaled the ends of production that it requires in order to sustain its middle class. The United States of America must reindustrialize itself to make it possible that 23 million Americans can go back to work in industries that are productive for themselves and their families. What we are witnessing on a daily basis is the demise of the American family, the traditional American family, of children, parents, and grandparents by people in authority who have used, abused, and misused their positions to hurt our people. This must stop and it will under my administration. The need at this moment of time is to get our organs of power in business to 
invest in research and development to make it possible for industry to not only survive in America, but also to thrive. My attitude is that the production capability of the United States is equal to none. Our workers are very productive if given the opportunity, but they must be protected by government that concerns themselves with their best interests. And that has been a problem for many years in this country. My attitude also is that in order for our people to get themselves in a position to care for themselves and their children, we have to evaluate at this moment in time what is important for that to happen. And I believe that it will be more of a decision on the part of the American people when they go to the voting booth to decide who they think is best qualified to do that job. I believe also that we are in a position to make decisions that will impact the course of history and to bring about positive change in the lives of our family structure. I want to say that in order to do that, the means of production will have to be a top priority to reindustrialize the middle class and to provide the support for the future generations. I want to say this, that in terms of how we go about this business, the President of the United States should be very aware of what has happened and what needs to happen. My interest at this time is to educate through my administration of candidacy for presidency to make it possible for you to learn more about me and to decide if you are better off since the election of Barack Obama and the changes that need to happen in terms of the increase in gas prices and food prices, the mortgage forfeitures that have happened since him, and also what we will do in the future to make it possible for more people to be employed out of 23 million who are not. Consider this opportunity to communicate to your friends and your neighbors my thoughts, and I look forward to hearing from you. I need presidential electors who will vote for me through the Electoral College when I win the states in this country to become your next president. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. We are busy right now with a lot of things. I have been here in Orlando, Florida since Ju July, actually since the 4th of July, toward the end of June, into the 4th of July, and uh, have continued on this path. I am pleased to announce that it is only a matter of time when we will actually be able to hold these rallies here. Um, there's a lot going on behind the scene. Um, the people are needing and wanting something different. The campaign managers that we have in several states, we want them to participate now in the next show for sure. That's on the 19th, because we're going to talk about the growth of the AOA. We're going to talk about the campaign and continuing to make uh, or history being made. Uh, I intend to, as I've said, I'm all ready to go to New York next month. In the meantime, um, I have found a way to communicate here in Florida on several different cities with regard to aviation services. So we have shelter to hold our rallies. Here, the weather here can change on a dime. And, um, you know, it could cause some problems if we didn't have shelter. So, but the airline, the airline uh, hangars really are the key for us. And that's what I'm 
I'm engaged in have been for some time. It's been kind of a pilgrimage of sorts, but that's okay because we I have found so many different opportunities to communicate with people that I need to and uh, I'm getting I'm getting results and that's what's important is only a matter of time everything comes together properly but it all begins with a start and that start began 10 years ago for me and it continues um, our Florida ca state campaign manager Pam Sullivan, we talk regularly um, and we come to the conclusion that we need to proceed with the state campaign managers in every state. Uh, this coming Sunday, that would be the 17th, I expect to be in St. Petersburg, Florida to meet several different people. And um, this is important because this now is getting the message further. It's expanding with other people. Very important. Other people are learning of the campaign. As that continues to grow, then other things will continue to grow with it, particularly as we make progress with the different airline uh, aviation services and uh, the media and the media uh, being that what they are they're looking for events and so if we have a right if we have a good event the media will be there and if they aren't there we will create an event and give it to them and that's how this is growing and so for that i'm blessed in the meantime um we are going to begin the process of getting meetings started uh, in the Central Florida corridor. That's important. That should happen soon. Um, I'm going to be leaving Orlando this weekend, and I'll be into uh, Western Florida and then into Central Florida. And then from there, we will continue to make uh, history history in progress and uh, moving it forward also i have forwarded several books of mine to people in california and in arizona but particularly uh congressman david schweikert david schweikert is in district two i believe or possibly district six in phoenix arizona david is the only congressman in the congress who is worried about the national debt. I am concerned myself, and I wrote a book about it called The Fair Deal, uh, canceling out the national debt and restoring fiscal accountability. That's very important because what President Kennedy did on June 4th, 1963 was basically transfer the currency out of the Federal Reserve to the U.S. Treasury where it belongs. Backed by silver, so that there was some precious metals backing the United States currency. Right now, there's nothing backing it, except the full faith and credit of the United States government, which I have no confidence in. The country is $31 billion, 32, going on $32 billion or trillion dollars in debt. That's unsustainable. David Schweikert says we will be dollar for dollar just to service the debt on the debt load with the tax dollars. That's unsustainable. What about our military? How are you going to support that? How about our Social Security? How are you going to support that? How are you going to support Medicare? And how are you going to protect America from all the cyber attacks? and the intelligence agencies that are necessary to protect the American people. These are things that need to be discussed. And this is why I'm here. And for that, I'm blessed. The best book I have right now selling on Amazon is the United Nations 
Agenda 21, the big lie that's selling all over the world. That is why going to the United Nations with the bold doctrine, creating peace and prosperity in every nation, is historic. And today we are making history, Stephen, because this needs to happen now. And for what it is worth, because of the criminals in Washington, D.C., and the criminals in every state in this country, particularly the bar associations, we are put in a position where we must fight. Because as I've said before, if you're not fighting for your family, who are you working for? All of this is very timely and continues on the path of the campaign. I am very encouraged by events as they continue to happen. And I believe that we will see a change as it comes about. I also suggest and encourage people to think about running for office to get into public office, whether it's local, state, federal, to change the system from within, including law enforcement and the justice system. Um, we need a strong justice department that punishes crimes all the way to the top. And uh, that means judges also. <laughs> So uh, as, as uh, we consider these things, um, it is my opinion that uh, as uh, the world turns, as I see here on the graphics, um, uh, we, make, we make progress every day. Um, and uh, so with that, uh, I will, I will you know, give you the floor here to uh, tell us uh, if anyone has come on the, on the line or if anybody has responded to the Zoom. Um, yeah, no, we're waiting for uh, anybody to jump on the Zoom. We also have a call in line, folks. We'd love for you to call uh, call in and hear from you um, what your thoughts are. You can ask Dennis a question if you have any questions for him or myself. Um, that number, again, is 702-482-8620. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, nobody as of yet, but hopefully we'll get some, some viewers on in a minute. Right. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit here. Okay. What I could do is create a group SMS chat on uh, with all the campaign managers for next week, and then just send them send the Zoom link to that so that everybody. Knows. Right. So, that way it's all. Right. And next, yeah, I agree. And next week, I hope to have Richard Sanders with us because Richard is my vice presidential running mate. And he is a very intelligent man. He could be president. I'm very pleased to say that. His wife, Iris, could be a, a, a tremendous first lady. And uh, I'm blessed to know them, um, having lived in Marion, Illinois. That's where we met and um, proceeded from there uh, in 2012 uh, from Frederick, Maryland, on my book tour. And then possibly I'll be making a trip to Iowa soon because Iowa is the gateway to the White House. And as we continue to grow in every state, we need a campaign manager in every state. The AOA is for we the people, people. And uh, please consider this a gift from God that came through me at a time in American history that it needed to, particularly when the Clintons were in the White House, because they are no good. And uh, there are reports that she may have been assassinated in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and Donald Trump may have been there. I'm not sure. I can't confirm it, but I say that because... I'm, I, I can only we can only hope, right? I mean, until we get either confirmation or debunking of that said claim. But I, I hope so, man. I really do because we need accountability for what these bastards have done. We really do. Well, she's caused so much harm to so many good people, particularly the mothers of our country. I, I never could believe the conflicts that this government has created for the families in America. Um. And it's it's all power and control, greed. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I noticed today there was a clip 
where she was stumbling and fumbling on 9-11 for the ceremony that happened um, during 2016. And it shows her falling into a van that was parked to pick her up. And when she's falling, all of a sudden, all the people around her moved toward protecting any cameraman from being able to see more about what was going on. And it, it, it says to me, there is a problem. And supposedly she came out, I think it was a body double later on in the day, all smiles and happy and waving to everybody. I don't believe that was her. And I think that uh, she may have been the duly departed to be candid. Uh, I would like to see more evidence. And this guy in Russia, Progosian, um, he's he's an interesting character. Uh, so is uh, Kordorov. He's a Chechen leader, supposedly, and hit Putin's hip pocket. Um, but uh, Progosian was going after Putin. And I think uh, in the book that I had ordered, and I still have it, I need to open it up. I haven't had time, but I opened it up. Talking about Putin's reign of terror in Russia, how he conducts his business, and what it, it, it creates in Europe. Let me say this. You know, I'm a historian. I um, have studied the Helsinki Accords. I have studied Ronald Reagan's uh, meetings with Mikhail Gorbachev, who recently passed away. Um, those accords were meant to bring uh, plenty, sustainability and plenty to the Soviet Union. Reagan didn't go in there with the attitude of destroying the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union collapsed on its own weight because it ran out of the ability to function as a government, per, per, particularly regarding money, finances. But if you notice, after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the restoration of the Republic of Russia, you start getting businesses coming into Russia wanting to do business and the whole situation changes where people are making money. Uh, it appears that um, the United States infused a tremendous amount of money into that nation. Uh, as at one time I saw where the shelves at the groceries in Russia were empty. They were resupplied. Also, the ability for the Russian military to use nuclear weapons was somewhat neutralized by an agreement with us. But all that changed when Yeltsin, who was appointed the president of the new Russia, gives his position to Mikhail, no, to Vladimir Putin, excuse me. And now, Russia is threatening nuclear war with the United States. What do you think of that? You know, um, yeah, it's very concerning for sure. I mean, definitely. I also don't think that we should be pushing as, as much as we're pushing. I mean, we're, we're all kind of provoking it ourselves. I mean, in our own part, you know, from just the, you know what we're doing, we're continuing to push it. I mean, it doesn't make, doesn't make any sense that we would continue to keep pushing this um towards this uh, direction and, and well, them the same of course obviously but i mean at some point we have to just decide do we want to all be annihilated in a nuclear war and have no humanity exist or do we want to figure out solutions to our problems that are that do not include nuclear annihilation well you've got a point there i mean i don't know if you're aware of it but north korea just got a submarine yeah, that is equipped with nuclear tip missiles and cruise missiles, as well as tactical ballistic missiles. Yes, yeah, I'm more concerned about those kind of countries with that ability than I am. Because, I mean, they, Russia's had it forever. They had, I mean, obviously, you know, nothing has come to blows as of yet. Hopefully, crossing my fingers here. But, um, 
I, I, I consider these other countries, like you said, North Korea, that has these abilities or may have these abilities in you know the soon near to be future. Those are un, we don't know if they're gonna you know all we take is one madman to push the button. Well, and and the other the other thing that's concerning to me personally is the number of these weapons launched at the same time. I mean, the defenses to take them out are good, but could they miss and allow the weapon to reach its target? And if it does, if it has the megaton power, it could destroy everything. They're saying right now that the Satan II rocket in the Russian military would completely wipe out the United Kingdom, England, if it were launched. Just one Satan II rocket. And so that to me is very uh, concerning. Um, I think Ukraine has a right to exist. I don't think it should be under the thumb of Putin. I think Putin's a madman, he's a monster. He has killed children. I think he needs to be taken out to be to be candid. He uh, has provided no support for his own country to get the Helsinki Accords in agreement to bring economic growth and prosperity back to Russia. My opinion, he should withdraw all of his troops out of Ukraine, let the nations be independent, let them grow economically, let them create uh, institutions of democratic support um, and uh, allow people to run for office in those countries to be candidates and begin the process of economic support. As I said before, it doesn't matter what nation you're on. If you cannot, you cannot support a family on minimum wages. Minimum wages were not designed to support families. Minimum wages were designed to provide support for individuals working uh, in a business, but not to raise a family. Family requires a lot more, a lot more. And as a result, if without that, people are, are, are not work. they're not living right here. Our system is not right. You need, need to have a living wage to me, a living wage could be 30, 40, 50 an hour. Um, the taxes, no income tax, um, providing, you know, that would provide one person could work while taking care of their family. Uh, if they both decide to work, then that's their decision. Um, but when you're forced to work, that's slavery. And that's where we are. A lot of people are in slavery trying to raise a family. And the divorces are not coming down. They're increasing. And children are being hurt because, in many cases, there's no cooperation between a couple to support their family. And as a result, it fails. And it's unfortunate. We don't seem to see anybody talking about this but me. And that's tragic. And so, you know, folks, wake up. We're in trouble. We need to do something about this now. We have to. Think about your kids and the kids you may have lost, what they're going through, what we're going through as a society. That's why I'm here. Ball for all 2024. If you're not fighting for your family, who are you working for? Think first what our country has become. Act and do what must be done. Run for political office, but run for the family unit in the United States. Work in the best interest of children, parents, and grandparents. Make that the staple of our culture once again. And make that a, 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 an important priority in our lives. If you're gay, if you're, if you're LGBTQ, if you're trans, all of that, that's between you and God. We believe in the traditional family structure that we believe God created, moms, dads, and kids. That's our belief. And we're not going to go off it. 
and we're not going to debate it. God created, I didn't, you didn't, and we didn't even create ourselves. I want to make a, a good point that I think is relevant that, that everybody needs to know. Like the only thing we all really need to agree on is that we all want to be free. And that's the only thing we have to agree on. We don't have to agree on all this other stuff. The only thing we really got to agree on is if we want to be free or enslaved. And if we all want to be free, then we all need to step up and fight this fight and do what we got to do. Run for office, speak out, do a podcast, whatever. The only thing we all have to agree on is that we want to be free. And that is it. Well, you have a good point there. It's 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 a lot of what has happened and been allowed since the end of World War II. I'm 72 years of age as of the 27th of August. Um, I've been in this fight for several years. It started for me in 2005, actually 1994, my father died. And um, for 12 years, I cared for my mother prior to her death in 2006. But I'm still fighting. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, how many years is that? 30? This is uh, 23, and that was 94. That's 30 years. Yeah, I'm still fighting. Yeah, it's crazy. But this is the government we have allowed to use, abuse, and misuse the American people to profit from and destroy our family structure as, as it was not intended to be destroyed. It was intended to survive and thrive. And our World War II veterans did a good job in building the country. Now this group of people want to destroy everything they built, which tells me it's very possible that the Nazi scientists who were brought to the United States after World War II had an agenda of their own to espionage and, and destroy America from within. Even though they were part of the rocket program, uh, Werner von Braun, you had NASA, and of course, guess who? The United Nations. <laughs> they were... Very integral because in 1945 and 46, when the United Nations was created, they created the charter that Eleanor Roosevelt helped create and write for human rights. But as a result of the manipulation of the nations by the powers that be, and I'm talking now the bankers, there's a, a character by the name of Klaus Schwab. I don't know if you know that name. The World Economic Forum. Yeah, that, that POS, Klaus Schwab. Here, I have to do my little, my little uh, impression of this asshole. <laughs> Be happy. Yeah, fuck you, Klaus Schwab. Excuse my language. But I think you need to. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this guy is a character. And uh, he he's crazy to think that he's going to put he's a freaking Nazi for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, buddy. I mean, uh, everything I've seen on him um, is uh, slanted towards power and control of the masses in a one world government. And he's the Antichrist. <laughs> one, one of many in this day and age, for sure. I mean, I would put Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci right up there with him on on that note. To be honest. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure Fauci would be one of his uh, henchmen, like Hein Heine, Heine, Heinrich Himmler. Right. Right. Himmler. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> you know, Himmler. He created the death camps. He uh, exterminated six million Jews, and. Uh, it's gross. It's gross what he did. And then, you know, you've got people like uh, Dr. Mengelis, who experimented on children, and uh, especially twins. He was very interested in that, and he would put tests through them and uh, see their reactions and all of this. And uh, he, He's another Nazi. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh yeah you know and it's just it, it's crazy uh i think many people in the united states who have done so much harm should go to guantanamo bay cuba be arrested and be put on barges down there waiting for trials and do the things that are necessary to clean up america and get it right again and talk to the people we need major changes in the tax structure in getting our nation back to where it's profitable for the people and uh, move it forward. Uh, electric vehicles uh, are unperfected. Um, I would like to see uh, thermodynamics with solar power and work generation through the wheels through generators wouldn't that solve a lot of problems cost the cost of fuel would go away the cost of the grid would be going away the only and how about if you can make your 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 home independent in other words you'd have solar panels on your home down here in florida there is a program that if you own a home they have to give you solar panels to equip your home. So that I think to be a national program. It's funny because what happens here in Nevada is what we have is a program where you get solar panels, you get your some most of your or some of your energy from the solar panels to your home. But what you end up what we end up doing is selling it back to Nevada Power. <laughs> Believe it or not, so I'm like it's like kind of okay. So how is that making us self-sufficient if we're just selling it back to Nevada Power? It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, no, it doesn't. I mean, uh, the if you're, kind of dynamic that's going on out here with the programs that we have as far as solar power goes, which is stupid, but whatever. <laughs> you bet, you bet. In Arizona, they have the nuclear power plant down there. We should be able to um, do it completely off the grid. That would, that's kind of the point, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, I hear you. Um, there's there's you know opportunities to do things it's a matter of our society having the political will to see that these things get done and the people to do it that's why i'm saying everyone should run for office who believes that the family is number one family first um and move it forward because if you're not fighting for your family who are you working for and uh it comes down to power and control, love of money, uh, are forces that have caused so much harm to so many American people. Of course, the border situation down there on the southern border and other nations' borders. Uh, Muslims right now in Europe are creating a tremendous problem for those governments and putting at risk the citizens, especially their children, from behaviors that are very dysfunctional within society and culture to the extent where laws are being broken, crimes are being committed, and yet you talk about culture clashes. These people in some cases don't think they're doing anything wrong to harm other people. And that's crazy. And so respect of human rights is number one, and being able to enforce the human rights is Absolutely. number one as well. Absolutely, 100%. That should be the number one for sure. That and then everything that goes with our inalienable rights for our constitutional law goes too. Exactly. In terms of the financial support for the campaign, that's been waning, but praise God, we are still in the game and we are moving forward. And that's what's important here. Regardless of whether people donate to this campaign or not, the issues are too important to be ignored and we must bring it to the, the attention of our people because this is a campaign for we the people. The AOA, ANC, independent party for we the people that is what this is about and this is why i have been engaged in the process for several years with my writings with my books and taking it now to the united nations 
and bringing about the media coverage that is so vital and important that the people understand there are solutions to these problems and they're in your pocket if you will pick up the books and read them. I have eight more coming and I'm very happy about that. And after the 19th, I will be probably back where I can continue to do that work to finish those books out. And then they will be available. Uh, Richard Sanders is a gentleman who has been very instrumental in the website at aoa-anc.org. He is the one who does the edits. He is the one who does the placements. Uh, so he will have some new material to put on the website. And then with regard to being getting our party on the ballot for 2024, getting the signatures that we need, this is why we're going to have this meeting next Tuesday here Alrighty. on the Campaign for America. How many do we need total to get it on there nationwide, you know? Um, well, uh, each state is different. Uh, some states don't require any signatures. Others require tremendous signatures. California and Texas particularly are very heavy signature states. Uh, I blame some of the legislators for what they have done here to keep people out of the political process but they're not gonna keep the AOA out because we have the right message. Yep. And uh, people recognize this as they get to know us better. Thank you Remember to- But it doesn't matter cause we're moving forward. Round them up, round them up, let's go. Round them up, let's go. There we go. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, I was gonna say that, you know, I mean, some of the some of the people in our culture in terms of advocations or advocates for whatever cause it is that they are into um they've shown their true selves to me and uh some of it's very good and some of it's very bad okay so i think you understand that quite well yourself Oh, yeah. uh, but, a lot of bad actors that have alternate agendas and these, and I, I know firsthand from my own experience. <laughs> right, and um, there is a group down here in Florida called Moms for Liberty. Uh, they're out of Melbourne, Florida. They're dealing with the school boards. And uh, there are two ladies that used to be on the city council, I believe in Melbourne. And they were, I think they re resigned because they wanted to get things organized better in all 50 states for the school boards and for the children. They were looking to get accountability back in the school boards because the parents have been demanding it. And so they've been assisting the parents to create elections and I guess raise complaints, file complaints with the school boards, run for school board, uh, win elections, and then change in the school boards uh, the problems that the school boards have created for the parents with their children. Now this is in addition to all these school shootings and the problem with gun control. Uh, the AOA is pro-gun. We're not going to take your guns. We believe that the people have a right to protect their property and themselves from those who would want to re, re, re I guess the word is to uh, retire them as well as to profit from them. When I say retire, I'm talking about murdering them. Did you hear about the um, that one? Uh, I think it was mayor or some, and somebody in a position of power. I think it was in New Mexico, or I believe it was about the gun thing. And she was talking about, oh, we're going to ban all guns because we can't. We, we don't have the manpower to it to, to stop the criminals that are using these guns to to do crimes. Did you hear? Um, oh God! No. 
Wow. But nothing surprises me when it comes to this subject. Um, there was a video that I saw today where it appeared that either the sheriff's deputies all in full gear now, you know, these police or sheriffs, they've got all this equipment on them, um, going into a home, looking to confiscate, confiscate the homeowner's guns. That in some areas is going on. Oh yeah, absolutely it is. And see, we're not for that. Um, we're not, not in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. The first two amendments cannot be infringed, people. We must hold exactly one of the most right. We have. And I believe in Texas, uh, constitutional carry is legal. Uh, you don't have to have a, a, a card to have uh, a gun on your holster, in your holster. Uh, I'm not sure. I think concealed carry, I don't know if they have that there as far as having to go through the process. Illinois is very bad with this. I mean, they make it very tough for people to be able to carry guns and have them in their homes. They use these red flag laws to, to say if you're crazy, you can't own a gun. Um, not to say that people who are mentally ill or disturbed should not own guns. I, I believe they should not. But it just seems like they're, Patience, they're red loose with it. And you're well, mincing their words to push their narrative and their agenda is what it's coming down to, folks. They're using that as the catch-all to get what they want, which is to remove our exactly. rights. And what he's getting at is they're using false freaking uh, reasons to try and take our weapons. When, of course, there's legitimate reasons why certain individuals should not have guns. For example, a crazy person definitely should not be having a gun because that's a risk. However, when politicians use red flag laws to and push a narrative to say, oh, we're doing it because of this, this, and this, when in reality they're doing it for other alternative agendas, that's when it's a problem, folks. Exactly. Because you can take um, all the guns from all the law-abiding citizens, but it's not going to take away the guns from all the people that are getting it on the black market. They're going to still get their guns, and they don't care about the law, so they're not going to they're, they're not going to think, oh, well, this is illegal, so I shouldn't do this. No, they're going to do what they're going to do anyway. By definition, they're criminals. They don't follow the law. Hello? And then if we take away all our law-abiding citizens' guns, we're going to be screwed. Yeah. That's true, and you have a good point there. Um Today, we were going to have some people on here that wanted to talk about ball care, health care that people can support. Now, yesterday, I mean, I'm here in Florida. I went to the emergency room. Why? Because I have Medicaid insurance. I have lipedema and scoliosis. In order for me to get support for my lipedema, I had to go to the hospital and have them check me out and also uh, look at my wound. I have an ulcer on my left leg that has to be treated regularly. It's a serious matter. If I don't care for it properly, I could lose my leg. And of course, clotting can occur too. And that can kill you. <laughs> so as a consequence, I am a very busy person in that respect, but the insurance company who I have, they told me that if I went to the ER, I could get covered for the medical supplies, which is what they've done. They've covered me. And then for my medications that I take, they can cover me with those two on a vacation override but it has to go through a certain protocol process in order for that to occur. The good news for me is I'm covered, even if I'm not in the state of Illinois, while I campaign for the presidency. And uh, this is all part of what we need to do now in terms of healthcare, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. The government is the payer. The doctor is in control, not the accountants or the 
uh, insurance adjusters. Because in many cases, people are 80 and 90 years old, they won't get support for that because they're not in the doctors is not in control the insurance companies are these premiums that people pay every month oh yeah absolutely not to mention the um the kickbacks piece that they're getting as well which is a complete conflict of interest and, and is is not not right at all because what you have is incentivized motivations for for providing health care we have people in our party who have cancer they have to have expensive blood thinners Costing at least six hundred dollars a month. Oh my God! They the can't afford it. I've gone up like freaking fifty fold in the last month. I mean, we can't even afford the blood thinners that my mom's on right now because of this. Exactly. So you know, ball care takes care of that. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor, and ball care will pay for everything. But how does the government function with that expense? Well, guess what? The government right now takes in a, every month about a trillion and a half dollars of which they run the budget. But unfortunately, a lot of that expense goes to the Federal Reserve in terms of interest on borrowed debt. That is the problem. And the fact that President Kennedy's executive order has not been fulfilled but ignored by every president since him says that our government is a bunch of thugs and we are dealing with that kind of a situation like mobsters is what they're acting like which makes them thugs by definition you bet and as a consequence the people suffer and this is why the AOA is here to change that and to bring about a seismic change in American society and the world. Because the bold doctrine, creating peace and prosperity in every nation, talks about creating a middle class in every country for its children, its parents, and its grandparents so that they can survive and thrive instead of swimming for sponges in the Philippines or making bricks in Pakistan to support their family. I saw a child in Egypt, which is a Muslim country, being used like a mule to take large baskets of whatever was in them and he was only maybe five or six years old. And it was ridiculous to see what he was having to do. This is the kind of culture and world we're living in. This must change. It will change. And I believe this is what God wants us to do. Praise God. Praise God, I agree. You know, we have to do this. I mean, if we don't stand up and fight and become active participants in the change, we want to see. Oh, we must. Start there is no turning back. And start writing for leadership positions and start calling shit out. Then we don't. We're not going to have any future generations to look forward to. Folks. There's not going to be any because they're trying to wipe us freaking out. Hello. So we all have to stand up and do our part, whether that be media, podcasting, social media, calling shit out, or sharing a post, or running for office, or writing a letter, or a number of other things that we can all do it's just simple stuff you know a lot of people might think well okay well there's nothing i can do about it so I might as well go along to get along no that's not the attitude we need to have that's how we got in the place we're at right now the apathy we need to take a step back and start doing something to say hey we're not okay with this we do not consent we do not comply and you the people that are supposed to be governing governing us and be elected by us the people are not doing your job, therefore, you're out. You say it so well, Stephen. Uh, I like that type of uh, talk. It's it's Thank very you. good. <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, I figure if I have the, an ability to inspire and motivate people, I have, a, I have an obligation to damn well do so. And if I'm not, then I'm no better than those doing what they're doing to commit these crimes and cover it up, so.
Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking about Joe Rogan. He's a very well-known broadcaster. I did uh, proceed to contact his office to have me on his show. Uh, I introduced myself to Dennis Prager's show as a candidate, and I was told I have a gift. So I'm incrementally making my way into the mainstream, incrementally. Despite all of the delays or obstruction because of whatever. But the good news is we are moving forward. Like I said, we had almost 300 views last time, last week. That was a, episode 38. So we're making progress. History is being kind to us right now. Yes, it definitely is for sure. And, and we're only going to keep pushing forward and keep growing more and more day by day. And uh, as long as we keep pushing forward and doing the work, I don't see anything why our traction should be lost. In fact, it's up to us to make that traction happen. And that's why myself and people like Dennis are doing what we're doing. You know, um, you know, you might want to argue, like, I'll, I'm going to get make a point that you were talking about last week. And you talked about how people, a lot, some people are like, well, writing candidates never won before. It's never going to happen, yada, yada, yada. Well, I say to you, how do you know? I mean, because that doesn't mean we shouldn't still do the work. Because if we don't do, you know, by by having that attitude, then we are stopping ourselves from even starting the race to, you know, and reaching the finish line because we've already given up. We got to do the work because we don't know if we're going to win because you very well might, you know. So that's to all the naysayers that make that argument. I, that's what I have to say to them on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's providing us a platform and an opportunity to advance not only for ourselves but for the whole country for the people i i see i see us changing the world you've got the world globe here you've got the graphics of the world i think it's perfect i mean the kingdom of god is at hand that's the way i see this and this is why I have been led. I sent three copies of the Ball Doctrine to the La Jolla Presbyterian Church last week. It got there last Thursday to one of the senior pastors and one of, well, two others. One, they, it's, the other two went to Malawi with the senior pastor of the church. His name is Paul Cunningham. But the gentleman I spoke with was Scott Mitchell. He's an associate pastor, but very good person. And uh, he, he had a real good communication with people while the pastor, Pastor Cunningham, was on vacation when he returned. And then uh, I also had a chance to talk to their communications department, as well as uh, the secretary that went with Pastor Paul to Malawi. And that was really good because this book is going to the united nations next month i have my ticket ready and everything's ready to go it's just october 25th right now the un is in general assembly they're in session they will be in session for till now till around the 20 21st of october so there's you can't do anything right now, but that's all right. I'm I'm a very busy man on so many that's different things. At the very least, it is. We're building a a party for America, and we're building a doctrine for eight on eight continents. I have eight political parties I have created for the Ball Doctrine creating peace and prosperity in every nation. And the cr crux of it is to build a middle class in every nation. Right now, the Biden administration is doing very little to build the middle class in America. As a result, we They're have too many homeless. <laughs> in my opinion, they're doing absolutely nothing. If there was, if there was a, a, a way to say that they were doing you know, negative in, in that regard, like doing the opposite, you know, like if, like if you were to have a negative bank balance, I, I, I'd go so far as to say they're doing exactly that. Yeah, I mean, we don't hear anything about building businesses. Um, well, all we hear about are vaccines. 
the next vaccine, the, the next, uh, you know, the last couple of years and how that's all affected us adversely. I don't think I trust any government official anymore about anything in that regard, let alone any other regard. Oh, precisely, precisely. And so my take is don't take the vaccine. And if they demand you take the vaccine, then you need to object and you need to go through the legal process. Right protect your rights and you know on that note here's a very good reason why you should do this folks i know you think well i might lose my job i won't have any income but if you don't stand and say no and i refuse they cannot legally fire you by law they're not allowed to do that but because they did now i want to make a point this recently had just uh been announced a couple days ago in new york a lot of the teachers that had been fired for refusing to take the jab just got uh, there a court came down, or I think it was one of the Supreme Court came down and said they have to all be paid retroactively from when they got fired and how to get their jobs back. The state has to get them their jobs back. That's so good. That, and I, I, I knew that was going to happen because there, there was no law saying that they have to, companies can do that and force people to get mandates to, to get a shot to be able to keep their job. That goes against everything that the law actually says. And this right here, this recent development is proof of that, folks. Hold the line, remain steadfast, stick to your morals, stick to your integrity, do not comply, do not back down. Hold the line. Exactly. All right, buddy. Well, listen, let's get, get on with the day. Um, I'll look for the program and uh, God bless America. God bless America, folks. Thank you for joining us. And uh, don't forget, we'll be doing a on episode 40 next week with all the campaign managers. It's going to be a great show. We're going to have the call in line, and we're also going to do a really nice promo for it as well. So don't miss that, folks. We will see you next time. Amen. Amen.